Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today we're making Petite Neufchatel. Now, the reason I'm calling them Petite Neufchatel is because, well, A, they're tiny little things that I've made and they're not the same size as a normal uh, Neufchatel, but they are still in the heart shape as is traditional for that uh, bloomy rind cream cheese. This cheese originates in France. Um, it's normally a lot bigger than this, uh, but I've made this smaller version, which I think is easier for people to make. Uh, it's so simple, it's criminal. So let's get on and watch the video on how I made Petite Neufchatel. So I'm using milk from Inglenook Dairy. It's unhomogenized. Don't forget to sanitize all of your equipment before you start. The ingredients for this cheese is four liters or four quarts of whole cow's milk, an eighth of a teaspoon of MO36R aromatic mesophilic or flora danica if you've got it, a 1 64th of a teaspoon of penicillium candidum, six drops of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, six drops of single strength rennet, liquid rennet, in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, and one teaspoon of non-iodized salt. So just clip on the thermometer after you filled your pot up with your milk, and we're gonna heat that up to a very low temperature of 26 degrees Celsius or 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Once your milk is at the target temperature, we're going to add the calcium chloride and then give that a good stir. Just check the temperature with the digital thermometer and yeah, it's about 26.8, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna remove it from the heat now. Now it's reached the temperature. Just take it off my little double boiler heating apparatus there and pop it on the stove. Okay, so we're gonna add the culture and the penicillium candidum at the same time see it floating on the top of the milk there. Now we're going to allow that to rehydrate for five minutes. I should have taken the spoon out before I put the cultures in, but doesn't matter. I've done it now. And cover that up. So after the five minutes, we're going to stir in the culture and stir it thoroughly through the milk. Okay, so once that's all stirred in, we're going to add in the rennet solution and just stir that for no more than one minute. So we're going to cover that and allow it to set over the course of 24 hours at room temperature. That'll drop down a little bit, depends on what your room temperature is. Mine was about 21 degrees Celsius. So 24 hours later, we're going to check if it's set and you can see a lot of whey floating on the top which is a good sign for this lactic set sort of cheese. I'm going to check for a clean break and yep she's set very well which is really good. Good quality milk always sets a good curd. 
So over to the draining area, and we're going to ladle the curds into a butter muslin lined colander. So this is a tight weave cheesecloth, not a loose weave cheesecloth. Make sure there's no fluff on the cloth. And we're just going to ladle off the top little bit of whey first. And then ladle the rest of it. Now, ladling, as you can see, I'm doing slices of curd there so we don't fracture the curd and make it go all runny. So it's fairly firm though, so you shouldn't have too much trouble during this stage. So we've got it all in there now, which is fantastic. So once we've got all the curd into the cheesecloth, we'll let that drain. And there's a special method of letting this cheese drain so we get a fair bit of the moisture out. We're going to tie it into a bag. So we're going to gather opposite corners. I'm just getting the corners out there. So we're going to gather opposite corner and then just tie a granny knot into it. There we go. And then same for the other side. And we hang that into a bag and let it drip out. So we just grab our cheese pot. Pop that under it and we'll let it drain for 12 hours. So the quick and easy way I do it, I just pop it on a chopping board and we've got some cupboards above uh, the bench and I'll just hang it off one of the knobs of the cupboard. And that works very well. Here we go, dripping. So that's at room temperature as well. So we're going to press the cheese now that it's drained. Just flatten that down with your hand gently. And we're going to press it between two boards. These have been sanitized previously. I've just used white vinegar to do that. I'm going to apply one kilogram or 2.2 pounds of weight. I'm going to press that for 10 hours. So 10 hours later, we're going to remove the cheese from the bag. Give it a bit of a squeeze. There's a bit of moisture in the tail of the bag. Place it in a clean mixing bowl. And just untie the granny knots, which take a little bit of time because they've been hanging there with a bit of pressure on them for a while. And then we're going to tip the cheese into the bowl. It should just come out as one big slab. There we go, lovely. So we're going to add the salt into the cheese now. So just pull that over the cheese and with clean hands of course I'm just kneading the salt through the fairly dry cream cheese. There we go, all done. And a bit of a taste test there, very nice. And I determined that that was salty enough, so that was good. So you just want this cheese is subtly salted, it's not heavily salted like, say, normal cream cheese. Okay, so beforehand I sanitized a whole bunch of these tiny little heart-shaped molds and a ripening box. And now we're going to place the, well, we're going to fill each mold with cheese. So this took a little while. I had to press it down so there was no air pockets in the cheese. Uh, so I used the back of a, uh, a dessert spoon and just pressed them in gently. There we go. A little bit does squeeze out the side of the, the mould, but it's not too bad. It's not enough to in, inhibit it from coming back out again. So just fill up with the rest of them. Taking as much care as you did with the first one, of course. So I've got eight of these small moulds and the mixture was just enough to fill those eight plus uh, probably half a ramekin. Uh, that we use just as fresh cream cheese on bagels. Uh, 
which this cheese is perfectly suited to do. There we go, and there's the eighth one there. So once they're all done, just uh, we're going to place them into a sanitized ripening box. Don't have to worry about overcrowding or anything like that. They're not ripening per se. They're more draining at this stage. I'm going to drain those in the kitchen fridge at 4 degrees Celsius or 39 Fahrenheit for one day. Now, only a little bit of whey comes out, so don't be surprised there's not much on the bottom of the ripening box. It's more to chill the cheese down so you can achieve this next step, which is uh, removing the cheese from the moulds and place them in another clean ripening box. Now, this takes a little bit of effort. You need to squeeze the sides and give them a bit of a pat and then eventually they come out and place them on the mat in the ripening box. So like I said, I, I figured the technique out halfway through. So a bit of a squeeze in the sides, pat on the bottom and plop, they came straight out. So I managed to fit all eight in there without touching, without the cheeses touching each other. There we go, just maneuver them around a little bit. And there's the final one. Let's move that one out behind. There we go. Popped it right in there. Lovely, just a quick wash of the hands. And there they are, all ready to ripen. We're going to ripen between 7 and 14 days in the kitchen fridge at 4 Celsius or 39 Fahrenheit. Two weeks later. So after two weeks of ripening, they kind of look like this. Little fuzzy hearts. Very nice indeed. And they are ready to be eaten. Now you can age them longer if you want. They will go a little bit runny. But you can see a lovely little pattern there. Nice white fuzzy mould all over them. And I think they're ready to eat. Look at that mould. Now the mould coating is not entirely over the cheese. It's just started to bloom. Especially at that very low temperature. So... Herd nerds, what do the baby Neufchatel or petite Neufchatel taste like? First of all, the smell smells like mouldy cheese, but that's what it has. It's got mould on it. What do you expect? But anyway, let's just cut into it. Oh, slices nicely. So essentially, in the middle, because it's only been like two weeks of aging, it's still only um uh, it's very cream cheesy in the middle it's a little bit of a rind not too much and that's not what you expect sorry that is what you expect um so i'm expecting some cream cheesy goodness coming out of this now you don't have to make them these small obviously you can use a proper full-size neuchatel mold these are the only molds i had available that were heart shaped so that's what i used them for um and yeah, you can pick some of these up at littlegreenworkshops.com.au if you want to. But there are bigger ones on the market and, and we don't stock them. But anyway, let's try the cheese. Enough waffling. Let's, let's have a bit of a taste. Get some on my cracker. It's a nice big bit there. With all its mouldy goodness on the outside. Like I said, it smells nice. Very creamy, just a little bit tart, as in a nice tartness. Not too overpowering, a little bit of the mold flavour there, you can taste that. Earthy, a little bit of mushroomy. It's quite nice, quite nice indeed. 
Yeah, I like those. If they, I kept them longer, then they'd start to go a little bit runny, I think, in the middle, and wouldn't be as nice. I think these are supposed to be eaten quite fresh within two weeks, like I've done here. So I think it's pretty cool. Very nice cheese. I'll have to go and share some of that. So if you want to make this cheese, then I highly recommend the soft cheese kit. Uh, and we've got some extra molds that you can add on, the uh, small cream cheese molds, and that'll give you the heart shape. Uh, but don't feel obliged. You know, you can pick up any of the ingredients at any good cheese making supplier throughout the world, since we can't ship internationally at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, it's a great little cheese. I really do like its shape. It's quite good. It'd be great for Valentine's Day if you want to impress that special loved one. Uh, and the flavour is nice. It's very subtle on the salt. It's mild on the flavour, a little slight mushroomy taste, as I mentioned, um, but that comes from the white mould. And absolutely creaminess from the cream, uh, the cream cheese that we made to make these petite Neufchatel Neuf into. Uh, really good little cheese. Um, so hopefully you'll go out there and make it. Uh, not too hard, it's so easy that it's quite criminal actually. Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds. If you want to support the show, check out the links below for Patreon and YouTube memberships. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, and uh, then you'll be informed of other cheesy content that comes out. Now, if you haven't checked out one other thing that I produce fairly regularly, and that's my vlog channel. Um, I will put the link to my vlog channel in the description below or in the subscribe button in the circle in the middle in the end card, just so you can go and have a look. In fact, I actually filmed myself having a lovely haircut the other day. <laughs> there are better things than that, of course. Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.